supernatural being from the glorious fragrance that your presence gives off to us, Lord. To be in thy presence, Lord, is joy forevermore. One second in thy presence does more for us than anything else there is in the world. Of all the great books of psychology one might read, and of all the great things that you could read of great men that wrote, there's nothing could compare, Lord, with being in thy presence for one second. We know that thou art here, Father, because of thy word, not because of any man or any individual, but because of thy word. We thank thee, O Lord, for the presence of Christ. We thank you for our Redeemer, the revealed word of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Father God, we pray that thou would forgive us of our sins, Lord, we're sinners, and we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. Our, our contrary ways, Lord, help us, Heavenly Father, this morning. Cover us in thy blood. Bring us to the place, Lord, where the church will sin no more. That we'll walk in thy perfect will. That the negative will be completely swallowed up in the positive. And the world may know that Jesus Christ has called and chosen a bride and that God of heaven tabernacled himself in human beings once again. Granted, Heavenly Father, that Jesus Christ will find a permanent resting place within the souls and the hearts of these thy people around the country. Now, Lord, we thank you for your presence today. Now, Lord, bless the remainder part of the service. Bless every individual under the sound of my voice. And, Lord, look not upon us this morning, but look upon thy precious blood, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we give all praise and have all confidence in, for we have no confidence in the flesh, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thankful for the presence of the Lord. I was shaving in the bathroom this morning, felt very poor in spirit. Kind of... We have a new member around our house, in case you haven't been introduced to him, a five-month-old German Shepherd, and he kept me up all night. He's got an awful big mouth, so I hope his mouth uh, at least kind of discourages the hippies from uh, passing through my yard or something. So I was kind of feeling poor in spirit, and wife didn't get much sleep. I had to holler at Timmy all night to try to keep the dog quiet. <laughs> he came up this morning and says, I'm dead. <laughs> so what do you think about us before we holler at you? And so I was shaving in the bathroom and felt very glorious. I said, how I'll make it this morning. <laughs> Tired. And I uh, didn't get to study none last night. I just got all frustrated and exposed from the Bible and went to bed. And then his presence passed by. I said, I, I know I'll make it now. Because if we can feel his presence, well, then we know he's with us. How many feel the presence? And oh, how we thank him for his book. How we thank him for the Lord Jesus. That he could come down and dwell with such a poor people like you and I in a little old storefront building. And so we're thankful for it. And we just want to see his glory made known. And it's a joy to look out upon you this morning and see you worshiping the Lord and know you. You, you love him with all your heart, say amen. amen. And we love one another because amen. he first loved you and I. Amen. And to think how big the earth is, and he called you and I together. Amen. Now, the traffic is bumper to bumper this morning. I had to just ease along. Finally got here to church a little late. But bumper to bumper going to the ocean, but we're here to serve the God that created the ocean. And to preach about his word that put the ocean there. 
Right. Just raise the head. You know, people today are, I think it's uh, ecologists, I believe it is, and my vocabulary is very limited, so if I misplace the word, you forgive me, and just ask somebody who knows, that's the third, you know. But uh, they give so much attention to the creation and not the creator. Uh, I love the birds, I love the bees, and I love the trees, I love the flowers, but they only make me think of what put them there. And uh, so they're all going to see the ocean today, way over there half naked. And uh, But they won't think about the one that put the ocean there. And so I want to put all my attention upon the one that put the ocean there. How many appreciate the, appreciate the Creator? Because without Him, uh, there wouldn't be no ocean there. So we're gathered here this morning, not to... Uh, uh, not to see one another, but yet we appreciate that. But we are here to worship the Lord Jesus. We are here to stand our post of duty as believers, Amen. believing that Jesus Christ has promised us a promise. Amen. We're Amen. gathered here, not around some man, but we're gathered here around Jesus Christ, Amen. who is the full body, carcass, revealed word of God. Amen. And we don't care a thing about of the flesh, uh, we are following Amen. Jesus Christ Amen. who is made flesh Amen. before Amen. our very eyes and revealing Amen. his promise. Amen. So that's what we're concerned about, Amen. is Jesus Christ being made flesh among us by his revealed word of God. And so what a joy it is as we see these things transpiring around us. What a joy it is to see that as much as unbelief as they are in such a state of apostasy, that you and I can come from all over the different parts of the country and gather around a promise that we are the first people of the earth in this end time. And I know this staggers people and people get upset about it. But we have found the church world believe it or not. Not because of something we've done, but because of the gift of God. That wisdom has revealed to us, knowledge has revealed unto us, that the church world is deceived. And we find them out of the will of God, off of the word of God, and we find ourselves completely in the perfect will of God. So therefore, we don't look at ourselves, and we don't question God, how can it be me? It just happens to be me. It just happens to be you standing there this morning. And so we just believe. We don't try to figure it out, we just believe. Why me, Lord? I don't question why me. I just say, thank you, Lord, it's me. So how many feel that way about it? And I don't know. Well, he comes down and and he's with us this, with us this morning. We feel his presence, the same presence that I feel in my home. I come right here, I find he's right here. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful, as the prophet said, Lord, if your presence don't go up with us, then I don't want to go. I would rather be in his presence than in any place in the world. In fact, I've said I would rather spend uh, a half a second in the field of the supernatural presence of Jesus Christ than to have an audience with the Pope today or an audience with the President. Because I'm finding out that their presence isn't supporting after all. Keep knowing they'll all be in prison. I tell you, children, the way I feel about it, there's one righteousness he's Christ. And if any man says he don't have no sin, he's a liar and the truth not him. For all the sin that comes short of the glory of God. But you know, we've come short of the glory of God, but we're, we're rectifying that. We have come short of it, but now our eyes are open and we're, we're meaning by all means to come into the glory of God. How many want the glory of God? The power of God. Uh huh. Brother Bob, please dedicate Rachel Irma Keith. Well, I'd just like to do that. Oh, I really would. And if the sister would come to the organ and piano, we'll sing a song. And we're going to sing a different song this morning, found over in the last page of the song book. Yeah. Yeah. I really like this better than that one. Yeah. 
Well, you know, the apostle said one time, you know, when Jesus started his ministry, he said, here, keep the children away, keep the children away. Jesus said, forbid them not, for such are they that's going to receive the king. So how will he do it? I don't know, but <laughs> with all things, with God, I look for little children to be in the king. Uh, I believe election will get it myself. I believe you can be changed in a moment in twinkling an eye and be a little baby and I look there and there you are. But it looks like you're about 20. All right, let's sing this little hymn here. When he comes, when he comes to make up his you. All in jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Light in the stars of the morning, his
the world that's ready to come. Amen. Bless her, I pray, Father. Bless her, Mommy and Daddy. And as thy servant, Lord, with unworthy hands, as I hold her, Lord, I just look at your hands now, and I pray that thy blessing may rest upon her, for I bless her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, good to see brother, brothers, and sisters, sisters with us. Glad to see our other sister. Uh, what's your name again? I keep forgetting your name. Uh, it takes me a little while, but I'll remember. So we're very happy to see you back and have each one with you, with us this morning. And after all, we love one another because that we each one love the Word of God. Amen. Anna, you wouldn't love me this morning if I didn't love the Word of God. Amen. And we wouldn't be together if it wasn't for the promised Word. Amen. So that makes us so wonderful. We think we're gathered around Him who loves us. Yes. Yes. Amen. I feel his presence like that, I just can't, all I want to do is just cry, you know, but you have to just make yourself kind of get out of it. We can talk a little bit. Now, if you'll open your Bibles, we'll, how many's been enjoying that revelation? Amen. Amen. But I guess we, here, we get sometimes a little used to hearing all these things, but we should appreciate the Revelation so much. Amen. Revelation 13 now. We've been going different places. We talked uh, last time about Revelation 12. And I'm going to enjoy that. Amen. That's casting out yes. the kingdom. That's what I was thinking about this morning, shaving. When I said, well, it's casting out the kingdom of the devil now, Lord. Coming in that hour, and that's when I felt his presence. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're we're living in now is a time when we're going to be casting out the kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of heaven is ready to come up on the earth. Amen. And this revelation is this stumbles people. And that's why that I don't like for any of my tapes to get out, and I don't like for you as a member of my congregation congregation of the Lord he's made me an overseer of, Amen. and uh, I don't want to be some uh, tyrant, but I do want to rule over you, yes, not with my personality, but I want to, you are given to me for me to rule over Amen. you with the word, Amen. and I know that if you'll let me rule over you with the word, then as the promise of God, I'll save your soul. Yes. Amen. And so I've asked many times that you not try to tell these great revelations. Amen. Uh, it would be much better to tell them to a stranger, but to try to tell them to the, to the disciples of John, our most beloved brother Branham. It only incites them unto anger, and we don't want to do that. See, the Bible said, if one of them would be your adversary, and they would very quickly. Uh, the Bible said, Agree with thy adversary while thou art in the way with him. Amen. And I would rather take the attitude of just keep quiet, hide the pearl in your heart, Amen. and see it's a battle of words. Amen. It's a battle of words. And that if I can't do anything, Amen. See, Amen. what do I do? I just be quiet. When I'm with the ministers, unless they prod me into it and, and they're in my home and I can't get out of it, then I'll have to talk a little on the revelation. But I try to do it in, in a way that the Lord would lead me to do it. Yeah. So the whole thing to do is just keep quiet. But you can witness, witness about the simple thing. You know, he's telling about a white horse rider and the coming of Jesus Christ because that's enough to blow your brain out. Unless you get revelation. I have seen mental insanity strike people, good people, and uh, I've warned many people, don't do that, don't try to figure this out, you'll lose your mind, because you can't do it, it must be revealed, so it's best to witness about simple things. 
But this notion of fine brother in this message, he just put it, puts out a good paper, and he's just lamb blasting and calling us dogs. And, well, I don't hurt me. I I just feel sorry that uh, he don't uh, he don't need to understand what I preach or what I teach. That's right. How can you just hear a statement that somebody heard me make and then jump to conclusions on that? And so I put it out in paper and I get, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand 10,000 people read that, you know. They say, where's that come from? Well, Lambert. Well, that has to be that way, you know. I tried for years to hide the revelation, keep it right here until the Lord sent me out on the field, but just one heard it, and something else told that one, and this one, and so what can you do? I've done the best I can do, but the revelation remains the same. It's true. Amen. Amen. So we just have to suffer those things, and so, but I would very much would like to say before I forget it, that when you uh, refer to me, I would that you just refer to me as your brother. Amen. Don't refer to any office that you believe that I have. I would that you wouldn't do that. That you would only refer to me as your, if you believe me to be your brother and your precious, you want to call me my precious pastor, my precious brother. That would a great thing to me. That you would just believe me to be God's servant. But don't refer what you think that I have from the Lord, because at this hour, the uh, days of Paul, and there's lots of men, I know Brother Junior Jackson, a precious brother, I love him, very humble, fine servant of God, put out in his paper how the Lord called him to be an apostle, and different ones, I know 10 or 12, 13 men, they got their name up there, apostle, and well, but you see, that's all right. If you would say anything like that about Bob Lambert, it just infuriates the devil, you see. Amen. Some men can say it and get by with it, you see. Now, you're, you're my children. The Lord gave me the rule over, see. My name, if you mention my name, it calls the devil on the scene. Yes. So it's best for you to save you trouble, to save everybody trouble, that is. Just don't say nothing about the revelation when you meet people in this message. Amen. Don't do it. Absolutely. Be better just keep quiet. Amen. A wonderful thing just to be hide the revelation in your heart and be still. Yes. Because remember, you could not have seen it unless the Holy Spirit Absolutely. had supernaturally drawn you Amen. and then the Holy Spirit opened your eyes to you. Yes. So you must remember that they are blind to the promise. And only with love, only with love, only with love will we be able to win them. Amen. Perfect love, that's the only thing to do. Because there's such a heated battle around this revelation. See, when they find out that I'm teaching they're not born again, they go off to pieces. And then when they see that they have some scriptures to back it up and things the prophet said, they don't want to look into those things. They go blind. Their mind, they just go to pieces. And so it's best not to throw them into such a turmoil like that until the hour is right. Amen. Now when the hour is right, I'll just open up their eyes. Right. So we must use Lord, lots of wisdom. So that's why I worry about the brethren in Trinidad. So it's all out in the paper there, some terrible things. I just come in for the Lord, pray God take care of it. That's all. We only do the best we can do. But you see, you want to always keep your eyes upon the Lord Jesus. Now, if my congregation get lopsided and get their eyes off the Lord Jesus and get them overbalanced and get them off on me, I'll get in terrible shape. Amen. The Lord might make me let me make a horrible mistake or something just to shock the daylights out of you. Don't do that. It's going to be hard on me. But if you just refer to the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, yes. and all I all that I'm trying to do is yield myself down to come to the place that He's called me. Amen. And I am a terrible sinner saved by grace. Don't never forget that. Amen. I am a terrible sinner saved by grace. Saved by grace. And if anything that God would do for me, has done for me, and will do for me, it will be the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
working through me as I yield myself down to him. But you see, when we make statements like white horse rider, prophet, and all these things, and you try to apply them to your pastor, that just throws me into turmoil. That throws me all in the awfulest condition it ever was. And that's what for uh, I would be farther along with the Lord if it wasn't for those things because they want to make me run. You see, I want to tell you personally from the bottom of my heart, I do not desire any kind of a ministry like that. Amen. I don't desire that. I never ask to be a Christian. I never ask to be called of God. Some supernatural being come to me and talk to me. But I want you to know that there are many, many men now claiming those things. Yes. Of course, they don't have the revelation and the message. They have no message, but yet they have a little something they pick, try to put together that's got full of holes. But you see, it causes a great strain because when they say, well, something gets out, well, they believe Brother, Bre Brother Bob to be so-and-so. Worst thing you could say. Yeah. Oh, I look at him. What he thinks he's a prophet or something. See? Yeah. Oh, that this that's a far from the truth. I I don't never enters my mind or comes to me that I'm anything. Now that's I hold my hand to God. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I'm just uh, I feel just the smallest one among them. That's true. I feel like I'm the least one among them, and then I'm amazed and. And I'm thank yet I'm thankful to God that he would give me uh, something that would cause you to have faith in me as a servant of God. But the promises and the things that I preach, they're perfect. Yes. The revelation is infallible. It's perfect. There's no flaws in the revelation. There's lots of flaws in me. So I pray that we'll keep all these things balanced. And when you say yes. something, when you say something, yeah. Make sure what you're saying is said right, Scripture. Yeah. Because, you see, you may be saying it right, but when your mouth coins a phrase, make sure that it's Scripture, what you say. Yeah. And always place it on the Lord Jesus and not on a man, because there is a hairline from this revelation is a, a millionth of a hair from the from Antichrist Amen. to the real thing. Yeah. I'm understanding this. Amen. On one side, your phrases that you make with your mouth will make me an antichrist. Amen. On the other hand, you'll have the perfect revelation from God. Amen. If you'll always place it on the Lord Jesus that he has these treasures hid Amen. in a center earth and vessel, save a grace. And always remember that it's not the man, but it's the ministry of the Lord Jesus just finding somebody to get in to act it out. Amen. And as long and listen, if you'll do that, if you'll place all that on the Lord Jesus and just love your pastor and love the Lord Jesus, and then he'll just bless us and bless us and bless us. Amen. But if you go overboard and, and try to share that love that you have for him and place too much of it on me and get it overboard on me, you grieve the Lord. Amen. How many understand? Amen. So let's when I preach about these things, I have to say them to make you up the top here where you ought to be. Yes. Yes. But make sure when you make a statement that it's right with your mouth. You know. See, there is a right way to say something and a wrong way. Amen. But what you're saying could be right, but you said it wrong. Yes. So, but if you'll always wait upon the Lord and say it, just weigh it out. Because when you're talking to an individual, see, and they hear them, they're just laying on to every word that you're saying. Just wait. Remember, Satan is there just ready to catch you to say Amen. something wrong. We've got an enemy to find. Yes. Now let's hurry. I want to get that upon my heart because it's kind of been bothering me for about a week. Now, Revelation 13, we want to read Revelation 13 and 5. Now, I can't background any because we don't have that much time. Now, and there... Verse 5 of Revelation 13. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue for in two months. Now may God add a blessing to his eternal way, to his eternal word. Now, notice here, we have been speaking about this, this, uh, we'll background just a minute here, because some of those maybe wasn't here. This statue that 
Daniel the prophet saw under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, we found out that that vision that brother, brother Daniel had is continued down to this very day that you and I are, are living in right now. So here we are seeing coming into existence the final climax of the vision of Daniel. Amen. Amen. Ten toes are, they are here now upon yes. the earth, yes. but they are not formed on the footsteps. Yes. Now those things are taking place before our very eyes. We see the nations getting into the place where there will be ten nations give their power unto this beast. Now we find out that the very beast in the end time is the very beast that was in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Amen. And where Lucifer incarnated himself. Yes. Now remember, this is good, we're going to get to it. I, I got something from the Lord. Hallelujah. Tremendous thing I got from the Lord. He woke me up the other morning about daylight, and there he spoke to me just three times there and showed me something just that carried me away. See, keep prodding at me. I kind of been laying back on that, and he just keep. I went and opened my Bible, and he opened it up for me, and there it was. I went to bed and woke up next morning. There it was again, just speaking to me about. It. So, the Lord will. I got some. I got a word from the Lord. Yes. It'll bless your soul, and I'll prove the revelation another hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, this. Great revelation that Daniel saw, finding its fulfillment right today. We're finding out that the very beast that was in the Garden of Eden ends up over here in this day that we're living in as the beast in the end time. <laughs> Natural born brute beast. Now that beast was the tabernacle for Lucifer, the fullness of the the devil head to dwell. Now just as the he got the fullness of the devil head got into the beast and he used him for a tool, right? So does the fullness of the Godhead bodily want to get into a body. And that body is the bride. See, we're not preaching about the Lord Jesus going to come down and come in one man. No. No. No, sir. The fullness of the Godhead bodily is coming down into you. Right. God manifested in human flesh. You will carry that around with you. You will have this treasure in your earth and vessel. Home, what Christ died for. And now we see that this beast in the end time, he's going to end up as the beast. But now he's moving into all them things. He's been the Antichrist. Is that right? Amen. He's been the false prophet. Is that right? Yeah. Now he's going to be, he's been the man of sin. Right. Now he's going to presently, in the future to come, the next few months, he is going to become the beast. Amen. That was in the beginning. Amen. He'll be the beast in the end. Same one. He'll be Judas. Yeah. That'll be his name. Amen. That'll be his earthly name, Judas. Yeah. I mean, to you and I, we recognize him as Judas. Yeah. Uh, who is the son of perdition. Amen. Now we're finding out that he comes into the Pope. Right. And all of these powers of the nation give their power over to this beast. Now watch here. We find out in verse 5 that there was given unto him a mouth speaking great thing. Now see, right, right there, I could just take all morning on that one little what? thing right there. Right. And that would do us great benefit. Let's just give a few minutes to it. There was given unto him a mouth. Yeah. Now notice here, goes to show you <coughs> that he did not have this. He doesn't know anything about it. He'll just go to bed one night with his pajamas and lay down there. And then before daylight comes, God will give him a mouth. He'll raise up the next morning with anointing on him he never had before. And he'll begin to speak great swelling words that he never spoke before. Because the Bible said there was a mouth given unto him. He never had it, but it was given unto him. And it was the God of heaven that gave it to him. So watch out when we say the devil done it. 
I want you to know that the devil don't do one thing on this earth that the God of heaven don't allow him to do it first. And I want you to know that the devil himself is the servant of God. What you got to worry about then? If God be for you and not the devil, how are you going to fear him? How are you going? Why would you fear the devil when he's the servant of God? I wonder why we're so afraid of the devil. When the Bible declares that the devil is the servant of God. He did not have a mouth. The beast did not have a mouth to speak these great swelling words with. It wasn't in him. He never had power to do it. He could not influence the nation. He couldn't influence the governmental powers until God gave him the power. God gave him the power. God gave him the mouth to speak these great swelling words. You know, over in Daniel uh, 7, I believe, it said that there, he began to speak great things. He began to be a great orator. Now, notice here, Jesus standing before Pilate. Pilate said, uh, uh, Sir, don't you know that I have power, it's in my power to loose you or bind you? Don't you know that I, why don't you talk to me? I have power to loose you. Jesus just humbly said, said thou could have no power except it were given you by my Father. In other words, it was already, Pilate didn't know it, but it was already determined of the Father. What Pilate was going to say to Jesus. And he had already let his prophet David coin it in the song. What Pilate was going to do. Jesus just said, no, said, you couldn't do nothing except we're giving you to my Father which is in heaven. Said, go ahead and do it, but he that delivers me unto you, he has the greater sin. So there, there was given unto him a mouth. There was given unto Pilate power to deliver Jesus up to be crucified. Is that right? Amen. Now notice here, the high priest. Now we we'll just take another one to prove this. Prove it many places. The high priest, <clears throat> all at once, God anointed the high priest. Yes. Hallelujah. God anointed the high priest. A deadly enemy to Christ. God anointed the high priest. Yeah. And he prophesied. Yes, heaven. Huh? Heaven. He prophesied that the would be expedient for one to die for the whole nation. Heaven. Well, he was an enemy to God. Is that right? God turned around you. And then there was another case uh, where uh, the king made a great speech. And all at once he got so anointed. That he gave such a great orientation to the people that the people screamed and shouted and said, The gods has come down. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord was standing right there anointing him. <laughs> standing right there anointing him. And when the people said, The gods has come down, and he stuck out his chest like he had done. <laughs> like them great swelling words that come from his great intellectual power. <laughs> and what did the angel of the Lord just smote him dead? <laughs> Because you didn't give God the glory. Amen. Now notice here that this is the same thing that's going to happen to this man here. It said that there was power, a mouth and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. Now, you know and I know what a great confusion and a great bewilderment this 42 months is today. Amen. Absolutely. But there was power given unto him to continue 42 months, and we know that that is three and one half years. Yes. Right? He would be given power and a great mouth to continue three and one half years Amen. as the beast. Yes. Yeah, with that office of the beast, he is given by the Lord to continue 42 months, three and a half years. Now, we can learn a great lesson here, Amen. a great lesson here, that one among us, one among us here, or several among us, and all of us eventually receive something from God. You'll be given power. You'll be given authority. You'll be given 
uh, a, a certain place in this kingdom that's presently now to come, this unseen kingdom of heaven, the power of God, the true church of Jesus Christ. Yes. The reign of Christ yes. here upon the earth in the end time bride, you will be given a place of authority, every one of you. Every woman, every boy, every girl that goes in the body will be given a place of authority and power. There's not something you go around and say, boy, look here what I've received, because you never had it to begin with. It will be given unto you, so all glory must go to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can learn a lesson here. Now, this man, the beast, does not know that this lays in store for him. Neither do you know what is laid in store for you. If you did know it, you'd possibly be so thrilled and stimulated and excited that you couldn't even stand to hear me preach this morning. But nevertheless, it will be. So we'll have to give all the glory to God then, won't we? Because it will be given unto us these things. Just like it will be given unto, unto this man. Just lay down tonight with his pajamas on, pants behind his head, and wake up the next morning, let it be. Now notice here, he said he received power. Now that's the same thing that Jesus said to you. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you'll do what I've told you to do in the Word of God, and not until. Now the very reason, I now my minister brothers just tear my hide up year after year, week in and week out, God bless their little heart, but if they'd only just stop just a minute, stop just a minute, I want to say we have a great profession. We have a great profession among the followers of this message. But I say we do not possess the things that we can say. I want to be honest before my Heavenly Father that I do not see this proud, glorified, powerful church that Jesus Christ spoke about, I do not find it in possession here and, and, and demonstrating what the Bible said. Now let the devil write, uh, rail and howl and, and call me a dog, false prophet, whatever you want to, but they're going to have to get it down in the book like it is. Yes. And Jesus said, you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. You cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, open the blinded eyes. And the very works that I did shall give you also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Now, the very reason why that you don't see the dead raised, the blinded eyes open, the sick healed, the reason why that you can't demonstrate the very acts and power that Jesus did in the early church did, is because ye have not received power yet. Amen. Now don't tell me that, well, we got it, but we ain't demonstrated. Honey, if you had it, you'd be demonstrated. Amen. I would too, and you would too, and you know it. How many like to raise the dead? Amen. If somebody tell me they want to raise the dead, I'd tell them you're alive. You, how many want to open blinded eyes? Amen. How many want to see cancer just fall off? Amen. How many want to see crippled legs just straighten out of Huh? How many want to see blinded eyes just pop right over? Huh? How many want to see a, a man that's deaf and dumb, never heard, never spoke all his life? Jesus said you do those things. Jesus Christ loosed the tongue of the deaf. The ear of the deaf and the tongue of the dumb. And he said and commanded for us to do it. Now we say, but oh, we got we got intellectual powers today. We got doctors. He never said that. No, no. He never said go into all the world with a medicine bag. No, no. He sent Moses with a medicine bag and opened it up. There's only one thing in there. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, the heat of all by the <laughs> No. No, Jesus. And then and Jesus never said to the disciples, the Malachi four and five, I put it all, Brother Bradley, you can't do none of it. No, no. He said that he that believeth on me. These signs shall follow them that believe. No, the evidence I have it is not believing that Brother Ram's a prophet. I tell you, anybody that can read the newspaper ought to know that he's a prophet. Because the word of the Lord comes to him. No, sir. The reason why that we don't see these acts and powers that the other church did is just because that we don't see the beast. The reason why that we don't see the beast doing the, uh, speaking the things that he is supposed, is supposed to speak the reason why that we don't see him doing the work that the Bible here that I'm reading about said he would do is because he has not received the mouth to do it. 
And the reason why that you're not doing it this morning is because you have not received it yet. That's the honest side of it. The dishonest side is that we've received it, but it don't act the way that it used to do. If the people have the power that the early church had, then it don't act the way that it used to act. But I'm persuaded it'll act the same way. I'm persuaded it'll do the same thing. So we have not been given this power. This beast has not been given his power, and the church hasn't given his power yet. Is that right? Now notice he said that, but he received power to continue for in two months. Now here's the good thought. Now before you, sitting there in those seats this morning, before you can demonstrate the power of God to do those mighty things that Jesus said and commanded you, you are commanded to do them. Amen. You are commanded to do them. You must do them. You will do them. You must do them. Amen. To be a believer. That's right. To go on the rapture, you must demonstrate this one. You will never go on the rapture. And I, I challenge the world, there will be no rapture until the bride does these things. Emphatic to me. That's an emphatic dialogue. You've got to do it. Now, before you can do those things, before you can be given this power, you must reach a position to receive it. Now, I know, here's a good thought. Now, before this beast can become the beast, he must come into a position where he can become this. Do yeah. you understand? Now, I believe that on earth now there is a group of people, a small group of people, that is coming to a set position of where they can receive power for service. Yeah. You just can't receive power like that. But there is a provided way for Christ to bring you to a position where you can receive power. And that should be the uttermost aim in your daily walk. Is that you see to it that you come to this place where you can receive power. Amen. Adding faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, faith, and brother kindness. All those things. Seven attributes, seven steps. And no doubt that God, this man don't know it, but this man is moving into a position of governmental powers. And, and obstacles and daily occurrences of monetary systems and, uh, and all of these things are pressing this man into a position. Amen. He don't know it, but they're taking place. Is that right? Amen. We can see these things taking place. You must gain or grow to a position to receive this power. Now this beast is to receive power for three and one half years by uniting world governments ten toes that was up on his feet, see? Amen. see? Uniting, it's uniting time, he's uniting both governmental powers and he's going to unite the world religion. Amen. He's going to unite the world religion. Now, here's the striking thing. By all observation of the eyes, there's many things that's going contrary to what God said. Yeah. Number one, I'd like to cite the World Council of Churches. They are losing ground and losing power all the time. Right. They've lost, I don't know how, over 1,500 churches alone they've lost in Europe and Africa have come out and disfellowshipped the World Council of Churches. They have lost over 500 churches this past few months in the United States alone. Wow. Have openly come out against the World Council of Churches. Wow. Wow. Right. But nevertheless, the Bible says, Yes. That the World Council of Churches, headed up by the Pope himself, would unite the whole world religion into one powerful one church. Amen. How many say amen to that? That's what the Bible says. Now, <clears throat> notice here, I want to turn my attention here now. Also, the Jews. Also, the Jews will be brought into the world council of churches and the one world church. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Notice that all the tension of the world and the minds, the governmental minds, and the armies of the world and the peoples of the world, there's more tension now 
upon Israel than any other state of government in the world today. They receive more tourists put together than all the other nations put together. There's wads and wads and wads and wads of tourists in Jerusalem. They're just as thick as the rocks on the ground over there. Why? It's because all attention is up on the Jews. The Bible said all the nations in the world will grab a hold of the stir of the Jews and say, God's with you. Is that right? Notice here the Jews, and if you want to turn over to Daniel 9, and God help me, I don't know what in the world we'll get into here. Because this is sure is a great controversial thing. Daniel 9, we'll look at it. And let's start at verse 24. Now we're talking about this beast now and some things he's going to do. Verse 9, uh, Daniel 9 and 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city. Now we know who thy people is here. As yes, he's, talk, he's, he's talking to Daniel, and that's Daniel's people, the Jews. Yes, it has nothing to do with the Gentiles. No, sir. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people yes. and upon thy holy city. Now, we know there's only one holy oh, I know the Pope, if he read that, he'd think it was the Vatican. Oh. Oh. But I want to tell you that there's only one, one holy city, yes. and that's the city of the king. Yes. The Bible said that my city is Jerusalem. Now, I don't care a thing for New York City or San Francisco. But if I had my choice spot to live, I said, Lord, plant my feet in Jerusalem. Because if God looked down upon all of the earth, upon all of the earth, huh? You remember my message about the threshing floor and the angel of the Lord? When the angel put his hand out on that one chosen spot, God, by an audible voice from heaven, told answers, Lay my hand. Don't you touch my chosen son. And, and call to hear his holy city. Upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins. Now he's talking about turning the, the, the iniquity and the sin of the Jews that reject the Messiah. He's turning them now. He's taking away the transgression. He's going to make an uh, end of their sin. Then little mini skirt Jewish women over there will one day cover their nakedness. Yes. Yes. Then little cussing, smoking, dirty mouth Jews over there will one day be speaking holiness and the things of God. Praise Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Going to turn it away from them, see? And to make reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Yep. It ain't going to end, is it? It's everlasting. In other words, they're going to do right for everlasting. And to seal up the vision. In other words, that's going to be the end of the vision. Amen. And prophecy. Amen. That's going to be the end of all prophecy. Amen. And to anoint the most holy. Amen. Anoint, well, that's the Millennium Temple. We're going to anoint the Millennium Temple, the most holy place. Now, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem yes. unto the Messiah. Now, we're not teaching on Daniel because we that's already been taught by Brother Brandon, but no more can be added to it. But we'd like to say just for the sake of Sunday school lesson this morning. That that was the commandment that was given under Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther. Yes, yes. See? Yes. You read Nehemiah and Esther? Yes. Under Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther, they were the ones that went back after the, the after the destroying yes. of, of Jerusalem. Yes. They were given a commandment by the king to go and yes. restore the city of Jerusalem. Yes. Yes. To rebuild the whole city. Yes. Now I said from the time that this commandment goes forth. See, there will be 70 weeks unto the Messiah of the Prince shall be seven weeks, see, and three score and two weeks. Now that's 69 weeks, right? Yes. There'll be 69 weeks until Jerusalem, see the street, 
will be built again, and the walls even in troublous times. Yes, Lord. And yes. after three score and two weeks, now all this is 69 weeks. Yes. There will be 69 weeks until the time that the Messiah comes to Jerusalem and is crucified by, by the Jews right. under, under Pilate. Yes. There will be 69 weeks will be determined. In other words, when Jesus Christ comes to the Jews, as he did 2,000 years ago, that fulfilled the 69 weeks. <clears throat> now, I know this is a great controversy, and listen, <clears throat> this has nothing to do with the revelation. The revelation that God has given me is for the Gentiles. Amen. It has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with the revelation. It has nothing to do with the bride. Amen. But uh, I'll, we'll just go along and read what it says. Amen. Now, it could be that God, in, in, the, in the future ahead, may give me a personal revelation upon Daniel. Amen. But notice that it is a sore thumb Amen. among the fathers of this message. Yes, sir. To this day, they do not know where there is three and one half years left to the Jews. Well, there are seven years. It's not known. And they're still in a great fuss over there. And it just, you just mentioned it, oh, it just causes all kinds of trouble. But they want to know, they want to understand. But it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with Revelation. It has nothing to do with your salvation. But let me say this. Let's just read what the Bible says here. And just leave it alone. Now, I said 69 weeks. And they were in seven-year periods, wasn't it? See? They were 70 weeks, but it was seven years, see? Now, seven years times 69 weeks is 483, 483, right? Now, that comes out to exactly with the, with the prophetic years, not using no Roman calendar, but you know how Brother Brandon saw that, 360 days in a year. You multiply that out, and we come out with the right number, 483. 483 was the time that Christ, the Messiah, came into Jerusalem. Yes. Now, it never said 69 weeks and a half. No. No. I can't find that in the Bible. No. It does not say that 69 weeks and a half. It said 69 weeks. That there will be 69 weeks until the time of the Messiah. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Now, I didn't study this out or nothing, but just reading it here. You just give me a minute. I have to kind of review this here. The commandment to restore, in other words, from the time that the commandment came, came to rebuild Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, and the temple, see, there would be seven weeks, see, at seven, three score, that's 24 to 60, at 67 weeks, isn't it? Is that right? Amen. And two weeks, that's 69, then, isn't it? The street shall be built again, is that right? Amen. The wall even till the time, Amen. and at the three score and two weeks, yeah. Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come. Now, we're talking about two princes here. Yes. But now notice here, 69 weeks. The Jews have used up 69 weeks. Yes. Is that right? Yes. yes. And from 483 years, when then 483 years is up, Jesus Christ rode right in Jerusalem. Yes, he did. And that was the 69, 69 weeks that had been fulfilled. The Jews had lived up the 69 weeks that was promised to them by God. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, not, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to teach this. I'm not trying to contradict Brother Branham. And I, I understand everything Brother Branham said about it. Amen. And I and different ones have wrote me and asked me about it. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not giving it this time to express my opinion on it at all. But as a pastor, and I, I didn't premeditate this, but just as we're reading it, I just like read like I said. Yes. But now God can come and give a revelation. Maybe there's something there yes. that my yes. eyes are not holding to. So you, I know you're laying hold on everything that I say. Yeah, I understand that. So I want to be very cautious of what I say. Yes. 
But as I said, I have no divine revelation upon this at all. But all I know is, is taking God for what he said, he said 69 weeks. Yeah. The, the Jews have used up 69 weeks. Amen. Now there was only 70 weeks allotted to the Jews. 69 of them is used up, so what are we going to do? we got one more week to talk about. Amen. How many say amen? amen. Now notice here, it never said 69 weeks and a half. Right. Now uh, a half of seven would be three and a half. Right. How many say three and a half? Amen. Half of seven is three and a half. Now it never said 69 weeks and a half. Amen. It never said 69 weeks and a half. Now then, if they used up 69 weeks, then there's one more week we've got to talk about. Is that right? Now let's read on down here. After three score and two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. See? Now see, that's broken up in three different parts. One part was the time that the commandment went forth and rebuilt Jerusalem. Yes. The other part was the time, how many weeks it took from that period to rebuild That's right. Jerusalem to the coming of the Messiah right. was another section of weeks, 62 weeks, right? Amen. Now we're coming on down. Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince. Now watch here. He's talking now. A lot of people get this misunderstood here. The Messiah. Now we know who the Messiah is, the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, right? To be cut off, but it's not going to be cut off for himself. And, a conjunction, and the people of the prince. Now, that's not the Lord Jesus there. Amen. Now, this is that little horn. This is the little horn that Daniel's speaking about. The little horn that destroys wonderfully, kills the people, and the people of the prince that shall come. See? Shall destroy the city. Amen. And the sanctuary. Amen. Now, who was it destroyed the city and the sanctuary? Yes. Yes, sir. Titus. That's right. That Roman, there's that Roman spirit again. Yes. Now, he Amen. attaches that Roman spirit that was up on Titus. He didn't say it was Titus, but he said it was the spirit that was up on the prince. Amen. So, who was it? Who was that to come down at what? It was the devil. Amen. In Titus. Right. Amen. Right? The prince that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and at the end of the word desolations are determined. Now here's the verse that I want to get to. And he shall confirm the covenant with many. Now you read it, because I don't want to read it. Yes, sir. Now you read it there. So if you'll never say it now, Brother Bob's teaching that this three and a half years. Uh, seven years left the Jews. You read that. Yes, sir. What does it say? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for how much? One, One week. One week. And in the midst of that half, now hold it here. Now let's stay with the Bible. And in the midst, let's see if it reads like this. He's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. Who is this prince? Yes. The prince of the people that destroyed the temple the first time. His people. See? He shall confirm the covenant with many for, did it say, for one half of the half of that one week. No. Did, did it say that? No, sir. Did it say that? No. Look down in your Bible. It said he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, one week over here, the way I was raised up in, on the farm there was seven days. But these were counted one day for a year. So that would be seven years. Now, I, all I know, we only got the three R's where I went to school. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. But half of a seven is three and a half. This there. It did not say he would confirm the covenant for half of a half of a week. No, no, sir. He said he'd confirm it for one week. One yes. Absolutely. Amen. 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 
This makes a big picture here. Yes, it does. Especially when Brother Brian said that she was burned by 77. Amen. I would say this is going to be awful interesting before this is over. <laughs> because a major prophet, a major prophet, Elijah, Amen. the messenger to the seven church age, said there was only three and one half years left to the Jews. I want to say, Amen. I do not find that in God's Amen. Bible nowhere. I, I can't find it. It may be there. Brother Brown never referred me to the scripture when he answered those questions in 1964. I'm aware of them as any other minister is aware of them. I know them all. I believe Brother Brown's revelation with all my heart. He preached a, he preached a revelation from God. But this is to my church. Amen. But I Amen. want you to know that Brother Branham got his line tangled up. Amen. Amen. I never said that. The angel of the Lord said it. The people follow Brother Branham, believe him be so much of God, they even believe him to be God. Amen. And are waiting each day for him to raise from the dead because they seen the man do such tremendous miracles. But Amen. Brother Brown was just a sinner saved for grace. He never no more believed he'd raised from the dead other than going to rapture. Yeah. But the people believe that. We don't believe it. And a lot of them don't believe it. But a lot of them do. But they ain't law. They don't do it. Why Brother Brown said that? I don't know. I don't know why. But I can show you personally error after error after error after error. I'm not looking for error. Everyone, but I just want to state this thing like it is. Yes, sir, everyone. Absolutely. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Brother Branham was a human being. Amen. When he preached the revelation, mm -hmm. he lined out on the revelation like it's supposed to be. Yes. But because Amen. that he was doing the work of evangelism, he was not able to let the line out straight. Amen. Amen. You, uh, now, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you, think, do you think for one minute that them denominations would let him back in their churches if he told them that they had to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you think they'd let him back in if, if he told them that if they worshipped the Trinitarian form of the Godhead, they was idolatry? Do you think that the assemblies of God would let him back? Well, he sent 350,000 converts to the same as the God. Do you think he could line up on the revelation? No. That no. Like that? no, because of the hour that he was living in. And bear in mind that the seals was not no. taken off the book. What the Brian said, when the seals come off the book, the Bible has become a new book to me. Amen. Oh. Is that a new book? Now, now, come on. I have read this book for 30 years. The seals closed it up. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Please answer me. The, the Bible said it was a closed book. Yes, sir. No theologian could understand it. No, sir, no. no Bible school could understand it. No. Come on, the Bible said it was pulled up. Said, uh, Daniel said, oh God, look here, oh what? He said, go thy way, Daniel. Until the end time. The book is sealed up until the end time. Many, many shall run to and fro. Trying to understand the book. And there'll be a famine for it. And they won't be able to find the true word of God. Said, but Daniel, they that know their God. In other words, there's going to be some eyes opened up now, and they're going to know their God. And when they do, they're going to do great exploits. Because the book will be open in end time. And we find out Brother Branham ministered under evangelism. Is that right? Amen. Thank you, Lord, come when he tried to catch the big trap. Yes, sir. Come on. 
You know when it has the Ten Commandments, Covenant Rainbow Trap? When he tried to catch him, he tangled up his line. Now I know that they would stretch my head out and chop it off. Hang me from the tallest tree. Brother Branham did not catch the bride. Neither did John the Baptist catch the bride. John, John had enough revelation in his day to know that he wasn't catching the bride. At the end of his ministry, John said, I'm not catching the bride. said, aren't you the Christ? He said, I'm not catching the bride. said, I'm just a friend of him coming. said, he, when, that, when that minister comes, he'll catch the bride. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. said, I am the friend of the bridegroom. So therefore, Brother Random said, the angel of the Lord told him, said, you got your line tangled up. Amen. Brother Branham said that the Bible became a new book to him Amen. after the seals were open. Yes, sir. So his line got tangled up. I can show you where it was tangled many times. I read them myself. They like to draw Brother Ruddle into a mental institution. Amen. It causes the ministry to quit preaching. Scares them to death. Because they can't, can't contradict the prophet. But it's amazing to me how the revelation that we're hearing <coughs> straightens out the line that is tangled up and puts it all together and makes it a perfect revelation. And it doesn't contradict his revelation at all. It just makes it live. Now, <coughs> getting back to my subject this morning, I know I've waited all these years and I've never said nothing about this. But for me, I cannot, I'm not going to disagree with everybody because everybody says it's the other way. No, no. I can't do that. No. He said here that this prince would confirm the covenant for one week. Yes. Now, to me, my knowledge of reading and writing and arithmetic, that's seven years. Yes. Right. It, it, if he's going to confirm it for a half of a half a week, it said so. Right. Yes, sir. It said one yes. week. Yes. That's seven years. Then if, then if that's so, there are seven years allotted to the Jews. Do you realize what that does? That throws the, the prediction of Brother Branham out of the picture. Honey, there's only three and a half years left now till the time of the burning. Bear in mind, I don't know of the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, where the earth is to be burnt at the time the rapture takes place. Amen. The earth is not burnt until the end of the tribulation. Amen. So watch out. Watch out. People say, he said it. I believe you cannot say everything Brother Bram said and come out on the revelation. I can show you things that he said that I would not want to say. No, no, no. no. In the Bible. But understand, he was ministering to a Trinitarian. Yeah. And if they yeah. heard him say that thing, he would yeah. not he would not be able to get back in any church. Amen. How many open doors have I got today? Yeah. One. <laughs> well, one in Jeffersonville, one in Georgia, and five or six in Trinidad. You, but you don't understand what I mean, don't you? Amen. One week you've confirmed the covenant. Yeah. Not a half week. Now, this is just food. This has nothing to do with your salvation. Right. Say, don't don't get scared. Say, well, maybe Brother Bob's right. It, it wrong. It don't make no difference. No. It ain't gonna hinder you now. <laughs> has nothing to do with us, the bride. Amen. God has never dealt me with His supernatural presence on Daniel. I've never, he's never led me now. But I just got in teaching on Revelation. We'll read this. Yes. Yes. Let it be just like it is. Right. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm not going to say here now. Now, Brother Ryan said that there's three and a half years left. He said it and I believe. Fine, he said lots of things. Yes. But I'm going to read here what the Bible says. Yes. Yes. But I, I want you to know that God don't expect you. Yes, 
He expects, when I preach, he expects you to look in the Bible and see if I said what. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. On questions and answers, 1964, after Brother Brandon preached 70 weeks to Daniel, let me say this. Nowhere. I, I didn't just, just labor night and day in study of Daniel that Brother Brandon preached because I don't feel led to. It's not that interesting to me. That's not my message. Amen. But I do not, I like to go on record this morning to my congregation. Mm -hmm. I do not find in Brother Brandon's teaching on the 70 weeks of Daniel. I do not find nowhere or under any intimi in, in intimidation where Brother Branham even casually mentioned there was only three and a half years allotted to the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because no prophet of God could preach the 70 weeks of Daniel from the Bible and say that there's three and a half years left because there's no scripture for it. Mm -hmm. that, I, that I can find. Mm -hmm. That I can find. Yes. Yes. Oh, and then we come back, well then, why did Brother Branham say that? Understand that Brother Branham is under the visions all the time, a nervous wreck. Amen. A lot of times he said things, he didn't mean to say it, but he said it. Amen. I know personally a different doctrinal questions he'd answer one time and answer different next time. Amen. He'd answer it like it was supposed to be. Yes, yes sir. Amen. But understand, the seals wasn't open. Oh. His lines tangled up. So amen. All them things into consideration. I'm just Thank giving that food for thought. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said there's one week left for the Jews. Yes, sir. Now that makes a big difference. Oh. Amen. Holy God. Now, if the earth is to be burned by 77, we are already now in the 70th week. And we are well halfway into the Great Tribulation. Is that so? We are now ready for the beast to make himself known. You know, I believe before it's over, people are going to be praying, Lord, send us something worse than bad shape. Amen. Our interpretation Amen. here is all fell to the ground. Amen. Huh? Amen. Now they're sweating it out. Amen. They know that if the rapture doesn't take place by midsummer, that they have missed the rapture and they are in the tribulation. <laughs> all right. Then there'll be a doctor and go out. We have missed the rapture. Amen. Oh, you better not know no man after flesh. The divine revelation of Christ to reveal the word of God. He shall, I tell you, before the bride leaves here, one hundred percent of the people is going to be in love with the Lord Jesus. They ain't going to see no, no man save Jesus only for me. We're going to be glorifying Jesus Christ and one another. And Brother Branham is going to be a precious brother. Yes, Amen. And they're going to see the revelation that he brought, not ever statements that he made. Amen. Brother Branham answered questions and answers, 1964, you read them. Brother Branham, on your teaching seven weeks of Daniel, did you mean that they were seven years after the Jews? Oh, Brother Branham, oh no, Brother, you misunderstood me there. I meant three and one half years. Yes. So what did he do? After they had all said amen. Yeah. Yeah. So when he preached one week, they all said, Amen. Yeah. Amen. I heard them on tape. Amen. 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 To one week. There's one week left. Of <laughs> Amen. He goes on a little bit. There's one week left to the Jews. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Lord. And then 1964, he gets up. He don't refer back to the Bible. But he comes in from seeing visions, wore out and nervous. <laughs> A lot of them questions, you know how he answered it. He said, oh, no, you misunderstood me. He's gone three and a half years. Boom, there they go. <laughs> Done away with all of his teaching. Perfect teaching on 70 weeks of Daniel. Done away with it all. And grabbed the hold of one thing. Yeah. Can't do that. No. 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 Now, what am I going to do? 
when I read this here. Mm -hmm. Am I going to work this one week? I'm going to say, but Brother Brown said a half week. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now there is where you got to come to. Amen. Amen. God in Brother Branham, in trances, in vision, in thus saith the Lord, is infallible. Amen. Infallible. Why? Because he was the infallible God spoke. Amen. But Brother Branham Amen. is fallible. Amen. Huh? Amen. So let's just keep it that way and go down the middle of the road with it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, you believe Brother Bob because you see what Brother Bob says in the Word of God. Yes. Now, you know what? You're well posting that. If you ever see me say something that doesn't say that, uh -huh. now what are you going to do? I'll read here this morning. Yes. Now, this will make me follow a man. Yes. And he said, confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, church, I know it says one week, but Brother Bram said a half. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to do it. No. no. I'm not going to do it. Thank you, Lord. Now, how many just better say what the Bible says? Yeah. Thank God. I don't know why Brother Branham said three, three and a half years. That's after Brother Branham. Yeah. And the Lord. Amen. Maybe God let him say that. Right. Amen. Maybe God let him say that. Amen. Well, he said 500, to, uh, say, let's say there's 500 million people in the world. I mean, 500 million people, a professing Christian in the world. And he said, you take the natural birth and one that blood cell and egg, one, a germ, one out of a million. Said, let's just say in the, in the spiritual birth, one out of a million ago. Said, that only be 500 going to rapture. Why, wow, that's, that's a doctor now. Yeah. Brother Brown said 500, and one church out in Arizona believes. Well, I shouldn't have said where it was at, but <laughs> they don't believe that 500 is going to go in rapture. Well, I don't believe that. What if I go there? If I go there, it's going to be 501. <laughs> And if all of you go out there, that's going to be 600 and some. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, but see, they're hanging on to what Brother Brandon said. Here it comes. Here it And then where, uh, where Jesus told, uh, Christ told Elijah, yes. now you notice I said, you see there what I said? I said, Jesus told Elijah. Yes. Then I turned around and said, Christ told so Jesus Amen. wasn't over there. No, but Christ was. Yeah. Not that yeah. sure there's the right way to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Christ told Elijah, don't cry. I've got 7,000 down in them denominations that's never bowed a knee to bail you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brother Brown said 300. Yeah. Said that was Elijah said, and the Lord said, only 300. Said 300 hadn't bowed a knee yet. Everybody said, Brother Brown, did you mean only 300 is, is going to go in rapture now? He said, and then that, and I said, no, precious brother, he answered, no. No, see, I was wrong. The Bible said 7,000, I said 300. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. A lot of times he said John, and he meant to say Matthew. Yes. Amen. We're humans, is that right? Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of times I know... I, I, I'm wanting to say something, but you know when I say it, it's wrong? Now, you heard me, but see, you didn't know what I wanted to say. Yeah. Only I know what I wanted to say. Yeah. You didn't. But you heard me wrong. But I wasn't wrong. You heard me wrong. Yeah. How many say amen? Yeah. What, don't that happen all day long with you around the house? Yeah. Your husband said, you said that. No, I didn't. Now, I know my heart, honey. I never said it, but you did. Well, that's right. Both of you are right. <laughs> so, well, let's not get all of our feathers all flushed up over seven weeks of Daniel. But, but if they find out that I did, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So don't tell nobody what it said. <laughs> But he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's seven years. Now, let's hold it there. Let's look at something. Now, if, if, well, no, if, all I know is what the Bible says. Yes, sir, thank you. Then, according to that, if there is one week left for the Jews, then that's going to throw the, the, the prediction of Brother Branham in 77 off. And if it's one, if one week is left seven years, 
Then it's going to put yes. the seventh week up somewhere in the eighties. Amen. Right. 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 Yes, yeah. sir. Right. Oh. Oh. If it happens that way, yes. if God hasn't got a man on earth, yes. the people, as much as they love the Lord and believe Brother Branham, they'll go, everyone go nervous breaking. And bear in mind, if they continually are making him the Lord Jesus Christ, it's hard to tell what God will put us through. All you say, God, watch out. God told Abraham, 400 years they'll be down in Egypt. He left them down there. He never said one thing. He said, 400 years they'll be in Egypt. The Bible said after that, was wrote they was down there four hundred and forty years. Amen. 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 Why? Because of the people's attitude. Amen. Amen. Right, God does what He wants to do. Amen. If they're going to make Him the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're not going to receive Christ to reveal the Word of God. Amen. And let me say this. Amen. And when ministers fight what I'm preaching, Amen. even when they fight what I'm Listen, you can fight any doctrine you want to. Amen. And God may lay still on it. But when you begin to fight, his heart, his heart throbs, you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. When you begin to speak evil of God's servant and of the of the heart throb of the hour, bridegroom's heart throb, to marry the bride. And you begin to profess that you already got the thing uh -huh. that he's getting ready to do and think so much about. Hear me now, preacher friend, whoever you are, brother, sister, your sins will find you out. Amen. Now we find that preachers fall into all kinds of sins. Terrible. Amen. And I, I predicted that too. Right. You need to watch out. Amen. And when you try to take a brother, that's the sinner saved by grace because of the supernatural power that he had with God and making the Lord Jesus Christ begin to worship him. Amen. You are in trouble. Amen. Amen. And that's where it's laying right now. They're in trouble. Amen. Amen. Now, a prop, I'll say this. When a man is a prophet of God, he never makes a mistake intentionally. Amen. Amen. He loves Jesus with all of his heart. He loves God. He loves his people with all of his heart. He ministers for one thing, love. Amen. Amen. Then when he makes a mistake, God uses that mistake and works it out for the good of both those that hear him both. Amen. 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 So God will work all that out for the good. How many believe that? Sure. All right, now, seven years, of, according to this here, Daniel 9, and 26 and 27, there is seven years left to the Jews. How many say amen today? Amen. According to that. Amen. Brother Branham said three and a half years. All right. Then if it comes that way, we are now present tense. We are now halfway through the tribulation. Yes. Yes. And we have, my preaching is all in vain. Yes. You are now in the tribulation three and a half years. Yes. And before sometime this year, the beast has got to be made known. Yes. And it is no way near. Amen. 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 So then, if it's going to hit seven years, we sure have got some exciting things to watch take place. Yes. Very, very, very exciting. Hallelujah. How many say been to that? Amen. Oh my, we we keep our eyes wide open. One more week promised to the Jews. Amen. Now, let's wind this first week up and we'll get into something else tonight. And he all oh, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Seven years. And in the midst of the week, they shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate even to the consummation, and that determined shall be poured up on the desert. Hold that right there. Seven years promised to the Jews, 
the beast is going to make a covenant with them for that seven years. Is that right? Amen. Now notice, there looks to me like when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the bride, every elected member comes into the body. When the last member comes, not receives the revelation now. But I mean it just the way, I say it just the way I mean it. When the last member comes into the body by the seal of God, the captain on the Holy Spirit, comes into the body which makes them in the church, and only the church is going into out resurrection. You've got to get in the bride, you've got to go get into the church before you go in the rapture. Now we're all hanging outside here. We can't go in the rapture with all of us hanging out, with all of you hanging outside. You have got to come into the body. Amen. Now, when the body is made up, then the blood will leave the mercy seat for the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. We enter into a horrible thing there. Amen. Not the bride, but the unbelief. Amen. Amen. Then God... <clears throat> now, this is the way that... Let's just say this is my personal... Uh, insight to it. I don't have much scripture, but I just got to kind of piece it together right there because Jesus just leaves it a secret. There's not too much that I can give you on it. But now notice here, there could be a lap over. You know, it's every age lapped over, didn't it? Even the promises he made to, uh, to Thyatira church ended up in the next church. And what he promised the Thy Church, Thy Tire Church, come into Philadelphia Church, come on down, Amen. and it all was not to them at all, but it was before the bride. That's right. Amen. 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 Now notice, but, did you know that the first age when God was dealing with the Jews? Remember, God could not deal with the Gentiles until Christ was rejected. That's right. That's right. Said, go not to the way of the Gentiles. Jesus never went to the Gentiles. To the way of the Gentiles. The apostles never went to the way of the Gentiles. No, but after Christ was rejected. Amen. Amen. Paul kept preaching the Jews but couldn't win none of them. Amen. Amen. Oh. It went over into a lap over. Now notice here, the Messiah was cut off. Is that right? He was crucified and cut off. But God never destroyed the temple until 40 years later. That's the truth. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Forty years. Yes, sir. It took to destroy the temple and scatter the bride. Amen. You want to watch out. Yes, sir. You want to watch out right now when men start putting a time element upon yes. the rapture. Amen. Yes. You have oh. never ever heard me ever even hint to them things, right. have you? Oh. No. You never will either. No, sir. Until it gets up there close, and then I know it. I say it, uh -huh. and I believe we will. Uh -huh. And I believe we'll know right up to the week. We'll know right up to the week. I believe yes. there'll be some on earth will keep you posted right up until almost the day that the rapture is going to take place. Thank you, Lord. But by notice here now, there could be a lap over. A lap over. Of the bride, see, from the time that she's supposed to leave the earth. Now notice, I believe when the last member comes into the body of Christ, there will be some ministry upon earth cut off the Gentiles by a message. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. He will just pronounce judgment upon say, See that you count yourselves unworthy yeah. of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the seal of God. Henceforth I turn to the Jews. Amen. And immediately when that happens, God will cut off the Gentiles. Yes, you I, now, I believe that personally. Okay. There'll be some anointed brother like Stephen, like one of those men that will cut off the Gentiles. Wonderful Lord. And then, then it's time now that the bride leaves the earth. And when the gospel leaves the Gentiles, yes, sir and goes to the Jews, then once again, God is going to deal with the Jews. Amen. He'll never deal with the Gentiles again. Amen. Never again. They're over, they're through, they're finished, and the gospel then will go to the Jews, and then the rapture will take place. Amen. 
Now, <clears throat> when God cuts off the Gentiles, yes, yes. the 70th week will begin. Amen. 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 The 70th week will begin. Amen. Now, according to this 27th verse of Daniel 9, Amen. it will not be three and one half years. Amen. But it will be seven years. So that, <clears throat> that makes it quite a big difference. Amen. It changes the whole picture. <laughs> Say, what? Well, how you want it to be, Brother Bob? I don't care either way. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, you won't care either. Amen. When you get what God's got for you, you don't want to care enough about nothing, just the glory of God. Amen. But now it changes the big picture. Now notice here. He said here that he confirmed the covenant with many for one week. Is that right? Now I'm going to close right here. For one week. And in the midst of that week. Now, wouldn't you say by our English language, by reading this, that if it was, he said, would cut off in the midst of the week, wouldn't you say that's half of it? Would you not say that half would be three and a half years? So in other words, he's going to make a covenant for one week. That's seven years. So now we know then, by our teaching, we've been teaching every time here, that the Jews will make a, uh, the Pope, the World Council of the Churches, and the Catholic hierarchy will make a covenant with the Jews. They will say something like this. Now, we have all got our own church. Now, this uh, reverend here, this reverend beach up here, he has his own Presbyterian church. And this blessed reverend, most holy uh, doctor, uh, you know, he has his wonderful baptism. Now, this uh, most reverend bishop, holy man of God, he's the head of the Church of Christ. Now, our precious Jewish brother, we want you to know that we accept you as our brother. And you come into this unified, we want to unify the world church to stand against communism. So that we'll no more be divided because, after all, we believe in the same God. The only difference is we believe him to be the Messiah, the Lord Jesus. But I will not let that separate. Us. Now you can go ahead and wear your own apparel. That's right. Isaiah the fourth chapter said, "In the last days, seven seven women will take a hold of one man." Huh? The prophet said, "In the last days, seven women take a hold of one man." And then women will say, "Now we'll wear our own apparel." I ain't not talking about natural women. No. We'll wear our own apparel. We'll have our own church, our own doctrine. We'll eat our own bread, but we'll be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So that, hold it there now. I just caught that. To take away our reproach. They did, oh, this is great. They did not want to bear the reproach of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and they wanted it took away. Yeah. And we'll have our own doctor deal. We'll eat our own bread and have our own church, but we'll just come into this United Confederation of Churches and to be called by thy name. And they'll do that for one week. The Jews say, now, you can have your own temple. What did Billy Graham say? Said now you missionaries said now remember said them Jews are under separate covenant. God deals with them separate. Yes. Now notice he said that he would break the covenant in the midst of the week. He'd make a covenant one week and in the midst of it, three and a half years he changed. He makes the covenant for one week. Now notice here. And said he would cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. That's right. Now the Jews right now. They, they are a nation, but they are without the temple. That's right. They do not have the priesthood set up. That's right. Amen. Is that right? Please. They do not have no place to offer a sacrifice. Amen. They're without the blood, and they are embarrassed. Amen. They know without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. 
and they know that their, their wailing and their praying is all in vain without the blood. So they are now knowing that. Now it goes to show you that there is going to be a time right now, presently, today, this hour, the Jew, now, please hear me correctly. Hear me? No, hear me? No. The mosque of Omar is sitting up on the rock, Amen. on Mount Moriah. Amen. Mount Moriah is where Abraham was commanded of Christ Amen. to take Isaac, a type of Christ, up on a high mountain. Yes. And that mountain was Mount Moriah. Yes. And Mount Moriah is exactly where Jerusalem is. Amen. And there on the top of the mountain, on the rock, yes. he offered up Christ Isaac. Amen. Isaac was the type of Christ that would be offered up Amen. on the top of Mount Moriah. Yes. There he started to stab his own son, and God had a ram in the booth. He said, Say thy hand, Abraham. Now I know that you love me. Abraham looked around and found a ram in the booth. Showing you that God would provide him on self a sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Now that rock there is right where the mosque, of, where the temple was built. Yes. Temple was torn down, and the, they erected what is known as the mosque of Omar, the abomination that make it death. Amen. And I seen that. Oh, what a mammoth rock that was! I went down under the cave there, maybe where Abraham stayed all night. Well, the prophets went to pray. I went down in there. There was that blessed rock there. And there, this uh, man spoke several languages come up. You know, I like to say the penny and the dollar, you know. So they wanted a guide. No, no, we don't need no guide. And he kept talking so nice, talking so nice. And, well, he ended up couldn't get rid of him anyway, so he had to go along with it. So it turned out it was helpful, and I learned some things I didn't know. We had to take our shoes off. I got thinking all the time, there there was reverence in the holy place, you know, and I just seen walk in with shoes on. But I took the shoes off anyway. And we, we went in there, and there was the rock that Abraham was supposed to sacrifice Isaac on. And he was talking about this most holy place. I said, sir, now you're quoting the Bible. Now I said, I'm a preacher. Now, for you to quote the Bible, please, if you're a guide, you must tell the truth. Is that right? Oh, yes, sir. Now, I said, I only want you to speak truthful to me as my guide. You just contradicted the prophets of whom you say that you believe. The prophets did not say this was the holy place. You said it. Amen. The Bible, Daniel said, it was an abomination. And oh, did he look funny. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I said, the Bible said... You said it was a holy place. The Bible says it's abomination. They're all of them standing right. I said, God said it was an abomination. The prophet Daniel said it's abomination. And said, I said, sir, this place that you think is so great, the most beautiful holy structure in the world, I'm going to tell you the prophet said, of whom you say you believe, he said it was coming down. And, I, and I'm telling you that your profession as a guide is, is, is at jeopardy. You are ready to be without a job. Because I said, when the next war breaks out, I said, this thing's coming down. Amen. And I said, and there's going to be a holy place erected, which will be the temple of the Jews. Amen. I said, sir, I hate to tell you this, but you're on the losing side. Wouldn't you say so? He said, it kind of looks that way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, I said, his word's going to be true. The prophets never lied. I said, this old abomination here is coming down there. I was walking around looking at it, you know. Now, 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 just hold it right there. I'm not predicting. I'm not saying the Lord told me, and hear me good. But it looks like. It looks like the Jews is going to have to have another war right away. Because I think that that mosque of Omar has got to come down. How many agree with that? Now, why did I say that? Is I'm saying what I said because of the Scripture. Can you make a covenant for one week? And in the midst of the week, 
in the midst of the week, he would break that covenant and cause them the sacrifice to cease. Showing you that the Jews, before they can offer the sacrifice, they can't offer the one place. Amen. And the place to offer it is up on that rock. Amen. And if they're going to build a temple, it's got to be built where God said to be built. And the abomination make it desolate, standing up. Now how are they going to get it down? Blow it down. Thank you, Lord. Just, just let that little brother kind of, he looked down there and all at once, uh, the Holy Ghost blinded his eyes. And he thought, sure, he had that rocket headed the right way, but it wasn't. And lo and behold, it landed right on the mosque of Omar and just blew it to Oh, alas, alas, the holy place is torn down. And the Jews, oh, we're so sorry. Oh, we're so sorry. And the rabbis is all rejoicing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, and them old bearded Jews ran through there and said, Oh, my. That we can build our temple now. We can build it now. And, and so fine. But finally, the, the Jews are just, uh, the Catholics, more kind of churches, are just, God will put it in their heart, and they'll just they'll rave and carry on a while, you know. And they'll just go along with it and say, now, you, you just come right and you have your own sacrifice, and you, you get your temple built up there, and, and uh, just come in with us, and, huh? Amen. And you'll just lick them right in there. Yes. Amen. Yes, then what the Bible say? After they have their sacrifice and all the rejoicing. Now, I know it's the tribulation, uh, the 70th. Now, yes. see, what I started to say had been wrong. I said the tribulation. No, no. Holy Spirit corrected me there. Now, notice here, the 70th week begins. Yes. But the tribulation does not set in until the three and a half Amen. years. Amen. Is that so? Yes. There is 42 months of great tribulation. Now notice here. There, oh my. There is a beautiful, yes. glorious utopia yes. of peace on earth, goodwill to man. Yes. Hold it there now. Now see, I cannot make the scriptures come together on three and a half years. Now notice how all that's coming together there? Now, I know it's here. There is to be. Now, I thought, Lord, if I get up before the people, maybe I see this thing kind of coming together. I couldn't see it studying and reading it the other day. But now, I notice here. See, there is to be a utopia upon the earth. Yes, yes, yes. Is that right? That's right. Huh? Yes. They're going to have a one world government and a one world church. That's right. And they are going to have one world government, one world church, a perfect utopia with everybody saying, Peace. Peace, peace. And the Bible said he would take the world by flattery and he would win the world and the nations of the world by saying peace. Amen. Huh? Amen. All right. Now, if that's so, how can you have a utopia? How can you have a world peace in a time of tribulation? How are you going to... Uh, no, I can't get into this right now. How are you going to cause commerce to prosper, cause a small craft to prosper, like Daniel 7 said, Amen. said he shall win the world by flattery, and he shall cause craft to prosper. Amen. Now we know the world is caught up in a great commerce. Right. It's caught up in a materialistic thing. People in Africa don't want to go on like they were in the hood. They want a nice, nice uh, ranch-style house. Yes. They want a car sitting in the driveway. They want a television. They want a, a hi-fi set. Yes. Yes. Huh? They want a bar and some whiskey on there. That's, right. That's America. Huh? Why so? Amen. Even after it's caught up in the materialistic thing. Amen. The Russians are tired of this war, yes. uh, this uh, Cold War, yes. fighting, and they want bread on the table, they want a nice car, they want more luxury. Amen. Japan, huh? Amen. China. Amen. The whole world is caught up in a, in, a, in a materialistic spirit. Amen. And the Bible said that this prince that was cut to come would cause small craft to prosper. Amen. And he would win the world of flattery and peace. Yes. Now notice here, 
How are you going to do that when the Bible said in the tribulation the sun would refuse to shine for six months? Yes. Yeah. You think you're going to go to fasting work? No. Uh -huh. No. When science can't tell you why the sun ain't shining for three yeah. days, Amen. what are they going to do when they ain't shining for three months? Yeah. And then after that, what are they going to do when the sun does start to shine and gets as hot? Right. Yeah. When it does start to shine, the first day it shined, it was 100. The yeah. second day it shined, it was 110. The third day it was 120. The fourth day it was 140 and it went to 150. Went up to 160 and began to scorch men on our earth, scorched every living thing upon the earth. That's what it is. You mean you're going to go to the factory and work? Yeah. Honey, you're going to forget about them payments on the car. Amen. You're going to forget about everything and run to the mountains to hide from the wrath of the land. Is that a utopia? No. No. But if we look at it with the seven years, they'll have three and one half years where they won't even know the rapture took place. And the preachers will go right off with Think that they're getting saved. Thank that God's a blessing. Oh my, I, I made twelve thousand dollars this year. I bought me a new Cadillac. Oh, I tell you, you know the propane's the bad. Well, he just brought us right out of that uh, inflation and depression. Come on. A perfect utopia. Everything's just peace and wonderful, glorious. And then all at once. All at once something takes place. Now if it comes three and a half years, you couldn't make all that come out, could you? Children of God. According to Daniel here in the 70th week, seven years left, you and I are going to see some tremendous things take place before I right. Bear, Bear in mind that if it goes past July, yes. 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 if it goes past July, then everybody's wrong. Right. Right. Yes. I predict that it'll go past July. Amen. 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 Right on past July. Amen. And the people is going to be ready and willing yes. and crying for the Lord Jesus yes. to come on the scene before it's over. Yes. Thank Amen. God for his word. Let's Amen. sing a hymn now. Amen. But we're going to watch out when they say peace, peace, aren't we? Amen. The Bible said when they say peace, peace, yes. remember, when they're going to have this, he told they're going to say peace, peace, and he's going to say sudden destruction. Heaven. Now tonight we'll just fit in a little more. See how we can we'll bring in a little more on Revelation thirteen, maybe get to the United States tonight. Oh my. Let's sing number forty four. What a friend we have in Jesus. What we do without him. Amen. Aren't you glad we got a way out of this time? Think all these terrible things ready to take place? Let's stand your feet. Well, he's got something here for us we don't have to be to see.
Him and praise Him for opening up our eyes and we can see the word of all with so many millions plunging right into a hell that has half enlarged itself to receive the many numbers. But He's been kind and gracious to you. He's opened up your eyes to see the man of sin, the beast, while many of your friends and neighbors and relatives go blindly plunging into a chaos, a abyss of the darkness. But you've received everlasting righteousness. Your sin and your iniquity have to be remembered no more. And you're waiting for the power of God to mount up out of here with wings of an eagle. How we ought to love him. Now with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I want Brother Bobby White go and dismiss us in the word of prayer.